the story of numbers, the fifth great Montessori lesson. Today we have another story, the story of numbers. It is a story from a long, long time ago. We don't know how or when people came to discover numbers or who started making numbers. We can imagine that they would need numbers just like we do to count how many children there were in the village, to share food out equally, to put the right amount of things together when they cooked, and to work out how long it would be before the sun went down or how far someone would have to walk to get to the river. These questions all involve counting. People who study numbers agree that everyone needs some way to count. We cannot tell what the first numbers were because nobody wrote them down. They were used when people spoke. They would have needed some way to record how many things they had and remember what amount they were up to. Some people use their fingers, others use pebbles, shells, knots on a string, or notches made in a piece of wood. The Malayan people counted with pebbles. They kept a record of what they had by using a pebble to represent each one. Say a farmer wanted to know how many animals he had. He might put down a pebble when he saw one and keep going till he had counted them all. He would then count how many pebbles he had placed and know how many there were altogether. People talked a long time before they started to use signs for different parts of their language. It was an even longer time before they made marks to show numbers. Historians are unsure when people began to write numbers. Do you remember the group called the Sumerians who used the wedge state stick? They used a stick called a stylus to write down their ideas in the soft clay tablets and bake them hard so they could keep their records. They wanted to write down as much information as they could clearly in a small, neat way and understand it later. They didn't want to make a mark each time they saw something because it would take too long and use up too much space. Imagine if they wanted to write a really big number. So, they made different signs for significant numbers, which made it so they had less marks to make. They used the same mark for one, two, three, four, five, and six. And when they got to 10, they made a different mark by turning the stylus on its side. They kept going till 60 and then changed the direction again. The Egyptians also used signs for numbers. They used pictures of things they saw every day by the Nile River to represent the numbers. They saw quite a lot of lotus flowers and tadpoles, so they used them to represent numbers. The Egyptians put these pictures together so that they could easily read large numbers. The Chinese also had numbers which looked like pictures. Some of these picture numbers they still use today. Do you remember in the story of communication? How the ancient Greeks took the signs for the alphabet that the Phoenicians used and wrote with them? The Greeks also decided that they needed to write down the numbers they used. Perhaps they saw how another group of people were counting and borrowed some of their ideas. The Greeks decided to use the first letter of the word for each number and use it to stand for the number. The number five in ancient Greek was the word pente. So the Greeks wrote P to represent the number five. The Roman took the signs that the Greeks were using to make their alphabet, and they took their numbers too. They changed their numbers to look like this. Have you seen these signs before? I'm sure you have. Perhaps on clocks, chapters and books, and maybe even on television when you're watching the ending credits of a movie. The numbers that we use today are known as Hindu Arabic numbers and have been found cut into rocks in a cave in India. Historians believe that they were created in India in the 6th or 7th century and were introduced to Europe through the writings of Middle Eastern mathematicians. People discovered that by using the Hindu Arabic numbers 0 to 9, they could make any number they wanted, even really huge numbers. This allowed people to not only add and subtract numbers easily, but allowed mathematicians to create higher forms of math, such as algebra and calculus. The next time you see a mathematician or your math teacher, 
remember to thank them. Without them, you would not be able to count your Halloween candy or know how much that new toy or video game is going to cost.